And now, Prophet, would you come and minister as God directs tonight? And uh, let's welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Wow. What a presence of the Lord here. This is wonderful. Hallelujah. How many has an excitement about tonight? Anybody have a little bit of excitement? I, I talked to a few people as they were coming in tonight, and there were several that are very, very excited. That's a great thing. I've told people for years that uh, when someone has an excitement about a service, an expectation, an anticipa anticipation. It is a sign that their faith is operative and engaged, and they already spiritually have tapped into something that's on the way. It means you've already engaged it. You've already locked into it, and you will receive something amazing. Isn't that wonderful? Because you don't get anything without faith. And if you're already excited, it means your faith's already working. So you're about to receive. How many likes those kind of signs? Amen. That you are in the receiving zone. Glory to God. Amen. Well, we've been spending our time with the Lord and pressing in. And um, my wife, Connie, is also a prophetess of the Lord and a powerful intercessor. And uh, we... We pray a lot together, and we pray separately, and pray together, and we pray all the time. So it's uh, because our source is the Lord. When your source is the Lord, you're going to talk to him a lot. Amen. You're going to keep that conversation flowing because he's the source of everything we need. We're going to be sharing some things on the prophetic tonight. I know that's probably a shock to most of you that I would do that. Those who have taken, how many in this room, you've taken the school of the prophets? You've been, oh, several, okay, okay. Even my wife has, so praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, I have too, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Over the years, I have taught that so many times. And we had it a little bit different. Uh, when I first started many, many years ago, I think we could go all the way back into the 90s is when I began to really develop it in, in, a, in a deep way. Now, I lived it, and we were seeking the Lord about many things years before that. Uh, I, I found out something about the prophet. The prophet's life is the prophet's ministry. In other words, my message is my life. I live this. And so when I'm preaching something to you, I, I, I didn't just, you know, study something in the Word and came up with something. It's actually what I live. And, and I believe that when you preach what is your life, it carries a power and an anointing greater than when you just studied for a message. Amen? Because you have to become the message. How many picking up on that? When, when we become the message, in other words, when we study in John chapter 1, it said in, in, that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, all things were made by Him, nothing was made that He did not make. And then down in verse 14 of, of John chapter 1, and the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. And the flesh has to become the Word. That's our part. Amen. We, we, we become that. And, and, and if you think that's, that may not be scriptural, let me give you a reference for it. Paul said, you are living epistles known and read of all men. Yeah. What does that mean? We are the Word. Yeah. We're supposed to become that. Amen? We get into the Word for the Word to get into us. Yeah. And then we are transformed into His image. Yeah. And He is the Word. Jesus is the Word. So what are we transformed into? The living word. Amen. Hallelujah. So when people look at us, they don't see us, they see him. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to be sharing some things with you on the prophetic a little bit different than maybe I have shared before. We're going to talk about the, developing the mind of Christ, thinking his thoughts, and God thinking his thoughts in and through us. 
when that begins to happen, there's what we call the flowing thoughts of God. We talk about words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits. All of that is involved. All of that is the revelation that God has. And I was studying this out about the thoughts of God and found out that as many as, as there are sands by the seashore, every seashore, is how many thoughts he has toward us. And it's all good. I, I can't even imagine how, how many thoughts he has. Only God in his infinite wisdom and ability has the capacity to think thoughts beyond numbers about each one of us. And it's all good. So you need to tell the devil, shut up. Amen. When the devil tries to talk about you and talk to you about you and accuse you, you know, that God's mad at you and God doesn't like you and it's all a lie. He has so many thoughts, it's beyond numbers. Amen. And every one of them is good. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. And, and think of this too. He, every thought he thinks is his will for you. <laughs> let, that, let that go deep, deep in your heart. Every thought he has is his will for you. And every thought he has is good. Man, that's a whole lot of love. That's a whole lot of goodness. That's a whole lot of excitement. Amen. And yet we can have the mind of Christ. We're going to get into this. We actually have it, but we have to develop it in order for it to be operative so that we can think with the mind of Christ. And when you think with the mind of Christ, you can speak as an oracle of God. I'll let that sink in for a minute. Because when you think with the mind of Christ, because how many knows that usually words come because of thoughts? Amen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And as we think, we usually speak. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. Hallelujah. So when we have his mind and develop it, we're going to talk about how to do that. And we're going to be talking about words of knowledge. We're going to talk about words of wisdom, discerning of spirits, operating in his power. God wants you to be one with him. Yes. If you don't believe that, you need to read St. John chapter 17, yes. beginning with verse 20, going all the way through verse 24. I can tell you right now, Jesus prayed, and if he prays, his prayers are the perfect will of God because he is God. And he prayed that we would be one with the Father as he is one with the Father. Come on, somebody. That's pretty awesome. In fact, he said, and the glory, Father, that you gave me, I've given them that they may be one with us. Hallelujah. I in them and thou in me and we're in each other. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Isn't it? Yeah. At least I think so. Amen. I'm, I'm going to be, begin by just giving you a couple of references that are examples of people that tapped into the mind of Christ and picked up words of knowledge. And I like to put it this way words of knowing. Words of knowing. See, some people don't know a whole lot. Amen. But God knows everything. At le- and his knowledge is perfect knowledge. And, and if we can think with the mind of Christ, and we can, then he will think his thoughts through us, which means his thoughts will become our thoughts. And he knows everything about everything. Praise God. So all wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. And all knowledge and all understanding is available to us. I, I, I already know that we're living below our privilege in God. We can have so much more. We can tap into it. And you may not feel like you're worthy, but guess what? You are anyway. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. None of us feel worthy. If it, you, know, you want to go on feelings? 
None of us feel worthy, but it doesn't matter. He paid the price for us anyway and made us worthy. Praise God. So you just tell the devil, shut up. Amen. And rebuke those feelings because they're wrong. How many of those feelings are fickle? Like emotions. Very fickle. God is always truth and his word is always truth. Amen. And we, we go with his word. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In John 14, in verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. So he's the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. In other words, there is no other. I, 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 hear, I hear generations today talk about my truth. Well, listen, you don't have truth. Nobody does but God and his word. So the only truth is, is God and his word. Now, if you have God and you have his word, you have the truth. But we don't have our own personal truth that's outside of and an addendum to God and his truth. Every, you know, let God be true or full of truth and everyone else a liar. Amen. That's what the word says. So God is truth. His word is truth. And what's wonderful about the word truth is the, the Greek word is aletheia. And aletheia means reality as God knows it. Because the word is verity. If you, ever, you look up verity, verity means reality. But it's not reality as we know it. It's reality as he knows it because he's the only one that really knows what reality is. We live in a carnal, mortal, physical realm where everything's falling apart, everything's decaying, everything is changing. Even we get old. Come on, somebody. And, we, and our physical bodies won't last forever here. So the only real truth, and see, truth is that which stays constant and continuous forever. It never changes. It's always the same. Well, only God is that. Only his word is that. So if you want to change the temporal that you are in, you have to go to the eternal and take the eternal and change the temporal. And the eternal is the truth. So we take the truth and we change the facts. See, in the natural, we have facts, but we don't have truth. If it can change... If one minute you can be sick and the next moment you can be healed, then your sickness wasn't the truth. It was only a fact. Amen? And facts can be changed. Did you know they can? Truth can never be changed. It's unchangeable. It's forever the same. So we take the unchangeable and change the changeable. And it takes the unchangeable to change the changeable. You can take the truth and change a fact, but you can never take a fact and change the truth. How many is beginning to get it right now? Amen. And his truth is his knowledge. The revelation of his will. Praise God. And God wants all of us to be partakers of that. Hallelujah. And to be in the knowing. God wants us to enter the knowing where we know. We're in the know. We're not in an area where we don't know what's going on. Listen, God wants you to know what's happening in the spirit realm so you can operate effectively. He wants you to know what truth is and what a lie is. Well, I want to say this real plain. Anything that's not the truth is a lie. So your circumstance is a lie. Take the truth and change it. Amen? Come on, that was good stuff. That was extra, by the way. Okay. Hallelujah. I want to take you to Acts chapter 9. Let's look at verse uh, 10 through 12. Acts chapter 9. And I'm going, to, I'm going to take you to a couple places in Acts and just show you where God's knowing ability was given to someone for them to know what he knew. And what came out of it? 
Because I want to share this with you. If God ever tells you anything, the end result is blessing. The end result is healing. The end result is deliverance. The end result is prosperity and, and the fullness of God. Anything God tells you is going to lead you to solutions, come on, and blessings and the fullness that he has for you. Because that's where it goes. I said that's where his knowledge takes you. Amen. Acts chapter 9, verse 10, reading through verse 12. And there was a, a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision... He's getting ready to give him some, some knowledge, some knowing here. He said, Ananias, he said, behold, I am here, Lord. The Lord said, arise, go into the street, which is called straight. Now, notice, here's some knowledge that God is giving him called a word of knowledge. And, and when God speaks, he can tell you even natural things so that you can know what to do and know how to get there. I'll tell you something interesting about God. He knows directions. He's the best GPS there ever was. Amen. Arise, go to the street, which is called straight. So that was, that's an, this is an address, folks. You mean God can give us addresses? Yeah, he can. He can. Arise, go into the street, which is called straight. Inquire in the house of Judas. In other words, on the street called straight, there's a house owned by a man named Judas. Now, all this is information that Ananias did not know. He didn't know it, but God knew it. And there was something at this house that, that, that something miraculous was getting ready to take place. But Ananias, in order to fulfill what God had planned, he had to have some knowledge. He had to know something he didn't know. Go to this street, which is called Straight. Inquire the house of Judas for one called Saul. In other words, there's somebody at this house that Judas owns on Straight Street. His name is Saul, and he's actually from another place called Tarsus. Now, friends, we talk about words of knowledge. There's a whole lot right here. In our churches, even in our charismatic churches, we're not quite used to this. We're used to things like, you know, someone has a headache or a toe ache or, come on, somebody. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. That's something you, maybe you didn't know. And the Lord's going to do something for them. Amen? And that's all good. But it can go a lot further. I said it can go a whole lot deeper. In fact, if you don't know what's available, you'll never have the faith to receive it. Faith begins where the will of God is known. In other words, faith begins with knowledge. Let me see in this. So tonight you're going to gain some knowledge and you're going to begin to enter into the knowing of God. Hallelujah. I'm expecting great things for you. For behold, this man, by the way, is also praying. Here's another word of knowledge. And this man has seen in a vision... A man named Ananias, he's seen, he's seen you, Ananias, coming in and putting your hand on him that he might receive his sight, which also gave him understanding and gave him knowledge on what his assignment was going to be, to bring healing to a man and bring salvation to him. Hallelujah. Isn't this good? Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 10, beginning with verse 1. I wanted to give you more than one here. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the, of the band called the Italian band. In other words, he wasn't a Jew. He, he was a Gentile. He was a devout man. Someone say he was dedicated. And one that feared God. In other words, he had a relationship with the Lord and loved the Lord with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. The reason he gave alms to the people is because they wouldn't let him in the synagogue to give tithes and offerings. When you read a book of Acts, in fact, I, got, I had my master's degree in the book of Acts, and it was word for word and cross-referencing the whole Bible. And when I began to study it, I found out that Paul tried to take some Gentiles in to the synagogue to worship and uh, they wouldn't let him in. In fact, they not only threw those people out that weren't Jews, they threw Paul out too and said, and you can't come back. 
So if they weren't allowed to go into the synagogue, how are they going to give tithes and offerings? But you can't keep a giver from giving. You try to keep a giver from giving, and the giver's going to find somebody to give to. Hallelujah. If the church won't receive it, they'll find somebody else. Hallelujah. And so it, sometimes we just need to study the Word and find out the background of something. Hallelujah. Now, he prayed to God always. He, he, he gave much and he prayed much. I mean, there's, there's keys here. I said he gave me, he was very generous in his giving, and he prayed all the time. Hallelujah. He saw in a vision. Someone say in a vision. Evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa. Here's some knowledge. Amen. I've been to Israel many, many times, and I've been to Joppa. I've actually been to this house. Hallelujah. It actually has Cornelius' name written on it. You can't go into the house now. It's owned by somebody else. Amen. But you can come by and take a picture. Hallelujah. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Someone say first and last name. Talk about a word of knowledge. He didn't just get the first name. He got the last name. I've had that happen a, a few times, but it's not all the time, but a few times. But see, when I learned what was available, I had faith to receive it. Come on, somebody. If you don't know what's available and you don't hang around somebody that's got something, then you can't get something. Come on, somebody. And, and, and God brings ministry and people into your life to impart to you what you don't have. That's why God brings them in. Hallelujah. So there's a five-fold ministry, and, and listen, this is a five-fold ministry church. Amen. Well, this is good stuff. And you, and you have an apostle and a prophetess, and they're also pastors of the church. Come on. Man, talk about getting a, a head start on this thing. Amen. And they understand the fivefold because they operate in it. Then they can bring other fivefold ministries in to be a part of the house to fully equip the house. Amen. And when you're fully equipped, there isn't any gifting that you can't have. You're not going to fall behind in any good thing. Come on, somebody. Isn't that wonderful? Now, <laughs> he lodges with one, Simon. And Simon, his, what he does for a living is he's a tanner. Look at, look, at, look at how many bits of information. I'm talking about details. He lodges this one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He gave him his address, seaside address. And I've been by the seaside, and I've seen the house. He shall tell thee what you ought to do. So God will send people to us to give us information and revelation on what God would have us to do. Sometimes the how-tos. How many is thankful for the how-tos? And tonight we're going to give you how-tos. Years ago I used to buy stacks of books every, every week for about two years in, in my ministry, early on in my ministry. And I would read them, all, all kind of teaching materials by individuals that were that moved in miracles and healing and the power of God and I, I kept reading and reading it but I kept looking for the how-to books because most of them would tell me about the power of God but I want to know how how do I operate in that I mean they, they would get me so excited about the gifts but how can I receive them and how do they operate how can I enter that and, and I noticed that most of the books didn't teach that. And come on. I found one book, and the very last chapter of that book told how to, how to be used by God. The last chapter. And it was very long. 
And so I was talking to God, complaining. How many's ever complained to God before? We, we normally call that prayer. And I was complaining to God about it. You know what he said to me? Write the books that you would have loved to read. He said, and the Lord said to me, he said, because you saw the need. Your assignment is to meet the need. And so we write books, and if you've read our books, they're how-tos. They tell you how to. Our school of the prophets, that's how-tos. How to be used of God. In fact, there's a, one of my books is how to be used by God. Amen. You want to know about, more about praying in tongues? Well, the Lord gave me a book called Supernatural Prayer. Hallelujah. And so many books. Hallelujah. You can get on Amazon under Philip Rich. I'm putting a plug in. Get on Amazon under Philip Rich. That's a word from our sponsor right now. <laughs> Glory to God. And order the books. Oh, I know. There's probably about 64, 65 of them. And then our School of the Prophets, too. You can get that on there as well. Uh, part one and part two. Hallelujah. But there's nothing better than being taught and being taught by the best. And you have one of the best teachers on the School of the Prophets right here. Come on, Prophetess Jeannie, wave at everybody. In my estimation, she teaches it better than anybody I know other than myself. Hey, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. And if you have been in her classes, you know it's so. You're going to learn the material. And you're going to be excited about it. And it's going to transform you. Amen. Because it's the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> what is a word of knowledge or a word of knowing? It is information given by God. I said information given by God about persons, places, or things not acquired by natural knowledge. In other words, it's knowledge given by God that you didn't acquire by a natural means. You didn't go to school and, and memorize it. Amen. Hallelujah. It's called words of knowledge. Now, when we understand that God is the one that wants to give words of knowledge, then we go to him to get them. Come on, somebody. And we're going to talk more about how to do that. Now, in 1 Corinthians 12, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, beginning with verse 7 and read through verse 11. In 1 Corinthians 12, look at verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one, or I like to put it this way, to one ministry, someone who wants to minister, is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. To another ministry, that's actually the endurance here, God's never going to use you in the gifts of the Spirit if you're not going to minister to somebody. In fact, you have to lay hands on the sick, and then the Bible says, then they shall recover. You got to lay hands on sick people first. Amen. Speak the word over them. Release healing to them. You don't wait till an angel comes down and appears, knocks you on the floor, puts a ball of fire in your hand, and your hand is glowing hot. And you go, woo, I'm going to go lay hands on some sick people. No, that don't happen that way. I'm sorry it don't. Now, I'm not saying it never has, because I did meet a man that that did happen to him, but it happened in an unusual way. Through some hot tar and an accident he was involved in, it burnt his hand, burnt all the way into the hand of the bone. But the power of God came up on his hand and healed it. And every time he's in a meeting and the, the power of God hits him, his hand will glow red hot. I've been in the meeting and seen it. It is red hot. And he gets close to any sick person, they get healed. Now, he's, he's probably one in a billion. The rest of us are just going to lay hands on the sick by faith, and they're going to be healed. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> 
For to one ministry is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another ministry, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another ministry, faith by the same Spirit. To another ministry, the gifts of healings. Not just healing, but healings, plural. By the same Spirit. To another ministry, the working of miracles. To another ministry, prophecy. To another ministry, discerning of spirits. To another ministry, diverse kinds of tongues. To another ministry, interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, let me tell you something about the gifts. You don't possess the gifts and they're not yours. Those are gifts of the spirit. And that's not your spirit, but the Holy Spirit. All nine manifestations of the Spirit are in the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit is in us, and as He wills it, He'll use us. So there's no room for pride. I've been to churches and people, you know, people would come up to me and go, uh, I possess all nine gifts of the Spirit. And I go, no, you possess pride. And you need delivered from that devil. Come on, somebody. There's no place for pride. This is not about us. We get to have a part of it. Amen? But he can do it without us. Listen, I've been in some countries where... God, come on, Jesus is showing up to Muslim people and showing his glory to them, and they're getting saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been in many countries where that's actually happening right now. Now, God prefers to use us, but if there's too many prideful people, he'll just sidestep us. I don't want God sidestepping me. Amen. Fall on the rock and be broken, or the rock will fall on you and crush you to powder. In other words, if you're full of pride, God knows how to get rid of it. Humble yourself, or he'll humble you. You don't want God to humble you. You won't like it. It's very, very humiliating. So how do you know, Brother Phil? I've experienced it. So I, on purpose, humble myself before the Lord. Now, how do you humble yourself before the Lord? Because you say to the Lord, Lord, whatever you want. With your help, I'll do it. That's humility. Humility is not going around saying, well, I'm the lowest of the low. I'm so humble. Bless me, bless me. I'm so humble. How great I am. No, listen, forget that mess. That's a mess. People who, who on purpose in front of you tell you how humble they are and that they're lower than a snake's belly agree with them. You're the lowest. You are right. Well, there is nobody lower than you. They will get mad at you because they're operating in false humility, which is pride. True humility is knowing who God is, who we are, and where we fit in the scheme of this thing. And that we're not greater than anybody else. I'm not greater than you. You're not greater than me. Amen. As my dad used to say when he preached for years, he said, the foot of the cross is level. There's no big eyes or little use. And daddy used to say that when he's preaching. There's no big eyes and little use in the kingdom of God. You're not, a, you're not greater than somebody, and somebody's not greater than you. We all have the same opportunity. Now, God does give more responsibility to some people and authority because if you humble yourself enough, he'll exalt you in due time, casting your care on him, for he cares for you. But if you get lifted up in pride, it's something that, that God said to Saul. When you were little in your own eyes, God exalted you, but now you've become big in your eyes, and God will strip the kingdom from you and give it to another. Amen? God can use somebody else besides me. I found out. Amen? And, and I, I could be left on a sandbar somewhere, wonder where the river went. Amen? 
So we humble ourselves so he can exalt us in due time, casting our care on him for he cares for us. Hallelujah. Some of you ought to get excited because the way God does it, you, you won't get left out if you really want God to use you. Hallelujah. Because God's just looking for somebody. Dividing, dividing to every man severally as he wills it, not as we will it. I, see, my will has to become his will. Lord, not my will but thine be done. What, what do you will me to do, Lord? What is your will? And, and, and the, with all the gifts of the Spirit, the one that will work in, th through me is the one that's needed. I've been in places where I couldn't operate in words of knowledge because that wasn't what was needed at that time. Instead, the Lord said, I want you to get everybody filled with the Holy Ghost that's not been filled yet. So we had a whole house of people getting filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I didn't operate in... Words of knowledge at all. I've been to other places where the Lord said, I, you know, call everybody up that's sick. We're going to get you, you and I are going to work together. We're going to see everybody get healed. I said, okay, Lord. How many of the Lord, the word says he's working with us. And we're working with him. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20 said that whenever we're preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. We work with God and God works with us. Now, Five ways to receive the fullness and the gifts of the Spirit and to flow in the fullness of God. Five ways to position yourself for God to use you. And then be wise enough to let him show you which gift you're supposed to be yielding to. Hallelujah. Now, there's some of the gifts that we are more used to being yielded to. I love the prophetic, and I'm used to being yielded to that. But sometimes the prophetic for me means hearing God on what not to do. Amen. And I've had it where I, I let people's expectation dictate what I did when the Holy Spirit wasn't in it. Apostle Fred Pine, because I, I was in a meeting. I mean, God gave me this powerful message. that, and, and during the message, I kept hearing the Lord say, this is the prophetic word for everybody. This is a personal prophecy for everybody in the house. Amen. So I said it a couple of times, and Apostle was there. And he said, sure is. This is the word from God. All right. Well, at the end of that, I felt people pulling on me, pulling on me, pulling on me. I should have shut up and sat down. But I, I didn't have the anointing of shut up on me yet. I hadn't come to that kind of wisdom. You know, you're really anointed when you get the anointing of shut up. Sit down and let God finish it. Amen. You're highly anointed at that point. Or, or you can do what I did, reverse the whole thing. I, I, I attempted to go ahead and prophesy over people. It fell dead. It fell dead. It fell dead. Fi finally figured out I better shut up and sit down. I did. Well, after the service, the apostle got with me right before we were going to eat the meal, away from everybody else, and he said, Prophet Phil, you preached a masterpiece message. Then you ruined it. The message was the personal prophecy, and you even said it was. But you let the people pull on you. He said, son, don't you ever catch me seeing you do that again. Ever do you hear me? I said, yes, sir. And I have it since. Hallelujah. There have been times I preach and sit down. That's tough when people came for a word. The only thing they didn't understand, the word is what I preached. But people enjoy that personal touch, you know. I like it too, okay. But, and, and, and tonight, 
the Lord may just take me to a bunch of people, and I'll prophesy over you. If he allows me to do that, I'm going to do that. I love that. Or he may have me moving words of knowledge and healing and miracles and other things. I'll, I'm going to do whatever Holy Ghost guides me to do. But it's severally as he wills it. Amen. Anybody learning something right now? Praise God. And pleasing God is obeying God. Pleasing God is not about us accomplishing something and us feeling better about it. Just flat obedience. Amen. I remember I had a word for Apostle Jeff Johns. Of course, I had, you know, I had his personal phone number, and I called him, and I, I said, Apostle, this is what I, the Lord told me. He said, well, tell me. Tell me, prophet, what the Lord say. I told him, he said, I said, but I don't, I really don't know what the interpretation of it is. This is what God showed me, and this is what he said, and I told him that. He said, yep, yep, I know exactly what it is. Thank you, prophet. Click. I was like, wait, explain. My job was done. Got to be happy with that. Amen. Five ways to position yourself for the Holy Spirit to use you and flow in his gifts and his anointings. You're going to love this. Number one. Build your faith level. You need a certain faith level that will enable you to move with God and cooperate with him because you'll never do anything spiritual without faith. You can't lay hands on the sick without faith. Amen. You can't even speak the word without faith because nothing will happen. Amen. It starts with faith and, it's, and then you... you, you Take your faith in the Word of God and speak the Word of God or obey what God tells you. In Romans 12, 6, this is Romans 12, 6. We're talking about faith level. Romans 12, 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us. Notice these gifts are grace. The grace that's given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. Now, what that means is this. The more your faith grows, the deeper and more detailed your prophecies will become. I'll say that again. The more your faith grows, the deeper and more detailed your prophecies will become and your words of knowledge will become. Hallelujah. And notice it's according to the grace. Grace, by the way, is an interesting word. Some people think it, it just means favor. Well, it does mean favor, but it means more than favor. It means God's ability imparted. Grace is God's divine ability that you don't earn. You receive by faith. It's an impartation. Isn't that beautiful? And, and, and we receive it by grace to operate in grace. So it, it's one scripture said grace for grace. I like what my mother does early in the morning when she, she's, by the way, she's still pastoring. She's almost 88. She'll be 88 in November. And she's still pastoring. And so early in the morning, you know, she will look out back of her house, you know, the sliding glass doors. She'll go to the sliding glass doors and put her hand on the glass and she'll say, Spirit of God, Give me the grace to receive grace. And I love hearing it because there's revelation in that. Grace is divine ability. So if you're saying, Holy Spirit, I need ability to receive more ability. Praise God. And there's a scripture that says grace for grace. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us, where the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. Now, the word of God produces faith. 
whether that be the written word that comes alive in you or God speaking direct to you. Both ways is God's word. Abraham was called the father of faith and didn't have a Bible. We have a jump start. We have holy scriptures. There's no excuse for us to have faith. But Abraham had the living word and heard God direct and believed what God said. Romans 1.17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Then there's a gift of faith. I love that one. Hallelujah. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where it says, To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 9. So there's a gift of faith. You don't earn. You just receive. I love that. And did you know all faith in, in itself is actually a gift? Because all faith comes from God and his word. Galatians 2.20, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Faith comes from God. And you and I encountering him. If you never pray, come on somebody, I'm going to hit on something. You just read the word but you don't pray, you still don't have faith. Because it takes the Holy Spirit to make the word come alive until it gets in your heart and then faith comes. So prayer has to be coupled with the word, and the word has to be coupled with prayer. I like to say it this way. We, we have to move from reading the word to studying the word and move from reading and study to meditation of the word and move from meditation to contemplation of the word, which is prayerful meditation. Prayerful meditation. Something happens when you meditate on God's word. And meditate really simple. It means think a lot about it and mutter it to yourself. Just speak it to yourself and think about it. Read it out loud a few times and read it slow. And stop and think about certain words you're reading. And how does that apply to me? And then you're praying in the Holy Ghost and you're asking the Spirit of God to reveal it to you. Whew. I tell you what, he will if you ask him. And when he reveals it to you, you get the life of it. Come on, somebody. The word has life in it, but it's a seed that has to be unlocked by water. Did you know all seeds have to be unlocked by water? The seed of the word is, is the same. It has to be unlocked by the water of prayer. And when you unlock it, there's always a flash. In fact, they had actually, you know, with specialized cameras, been able to see when a seed germinates. And there's a, there's a flash of light. In other words, a flash of life. John 1 and 4. In him was life, and the life was the light. In him was life, and the life was the light. The light is revelation. When the Holy Spirit unveils the word of God to you, come on, he shines a light on it. it. He is germinating it. When he germinates it, what the word says becomes what the word does. It comes alive in you and begins to produce what it says. So if you have that happen with a scripture about healing and you happen to be sick, can you know what happens when that word germinates and comes alive inside of you? A word of healing. By his stripes we are healed. When that germinates and comes alive on the inside of you, what happens? Healing flows. And sickness goes. Hallelujah. 
Same thing with finances. I mean, I just go on and on and on. There comes a point where what the Word says becomes what the Word does. When you understand that, you'll understand the secret to everything I need is in the Word that has been inside of me that is germinated and made alive by the Spirit of God through prayer. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. And, and, and something about this means that you can receive a healing every day of your life or any miracle you need if you know how to get the seed in you and get it germinated till there's a spark of life and then it grows and produces the fruit of what it actually says. Wow. Now, is anybody getting this? Wow, it's good stuff. Hallelujah. Now, there's such a thing as impartation of faith. If you get around people who have faith and you know how to rub shoulders with them enough, what they have becomes yours. Listen, I, I found out some things about impartation that, that comes just by life. Our children would hang out with certain children at school and what those children were saying and how they would say things, our kids would come back and say the same thing, act in the same way. Where'd they get that? Impartation. Good, bad, or ugly, it's there. 2 Timothy 1.5. When I call to remembrance, 2 Timothy 1.5, Paul said this, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, that means pure faith, without hypocrisy, that is in thee which first, say first, dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is in thee also. <laughs> That's impartation. From one generation to another generation. From one person to another person. Choose your friends wisely. What they have and who they are is who you'll become. Be cautious. You can get awesome things and you get horrible things. And the Bible says to, to run from an angry man lest you learn his ways. I'll in the book of Proverbs. Amen. Don't hang around people who can't control their tempers. That's a spirit that'll jump on you. Like fleas jumping off from one dog to the next. I'm not calling you a dog. I'm just giving you some information. Hallelujah. Jumping from one person to another. Praise God. Amen. Now, you're going to love this. We have to develop into the mind of Christ. It's available. I said it's available. But without the meditation of the word that leads to the contemplation of the word, we will never develop the mind of Christ, even though it's available. It has to be developed in us. And I'm going to take you to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Stay with me. Stay with me. 1 Timothy 4, 13 through 15. Till I come. Give attendance to reading. How I many knows reading is the beginning of study, but it is not the culmination of it? To reading, to exhortation. Exhortation means good preaching. To doctrine is good teaching. Did you know you're, along with reading the Word, you're supposed to be listening to good preaching and teaching that's biblical? That's line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, there's a lot of preaching I don't listen to because they're, te- they're, they're not giving me anything about the Word here. I, I say, I, I always look for Scripture, not just somebody's experience. Experience is good if you give me the Word first. Tell me what the Bible says so I have proof that it's right. Hallelujah. I mean, the devil, the devil can give you an experience. doesn't mean it's biblical. Amen. And some people get really weird and call it God. 
See, I don't believe in spooky spiritual, but I believe in spiritual, but not spooky spiritual. That, that's beyond the Word of God. See, if you get beyond the Word of God, you've gone too far, and you're in a realm where the enemy can do something with you. Yeah. Woo, this is good stuff. That's why the teaching and the preaching of the Word is so foundational. That's why I don't just go into places and, and just do my stuff. I teach and preach the Word. I, I had one place they invited me to come, and they said, Now, Prophet Phil, we know God uses you in the gifts of the Spirit. We know that you see healing and miracle signs and wonders wherever you go. I said, yes. Okay, we have a lot of good preachers here. We don't need that. We just want you to come and just flow. Come on, brother, just come and flow. You know what my response was? No, I can't just flow. The Lord confirms his word with signs following. I can't produce anything outside of the revelation of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. So guess what? I turned it down. If I, listen, my first call is to be a teacher and preacher of the word. If I don't do that, nothing else is going to happen because the word produces it. See, the word produces faith and faith produces the gifts and the manifestations of God. Why do you think on foreign fields we, we, we preach the gospel of Jesus and right after that healings and miracles break out? We don't just go and move in healings and miracles because you can't. And if you did, it would lead them to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And they already worship a ton of gods anyway. And none of them save them. The Lord does the miracles to lead them to salvation. But he first, his word must be preached, and he'll confirm that. Amen. And it will lead people to him. Ultimately, it should bring salvation. Amen. Uh, wow. Till I come give a tennis to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, so that preaching and teaching along with reading. Neglect not the gift that's in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. That was basically talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And prophesying over people and laying hands on them. Meditate on these things. So, you, you know, you're, along with meditating on the Word of God, you're supposed to meditate on prophetic words that true men and women of God gave you. That's what it just said. Meditate on all these things. If you ever receive a prophetic word, don't mistreat it. Because you've offended the God who spoke it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, despise not prophesyings. And the word despise there, and also means don't quench the spirit. It's all in the same context. Despising prophesyings is the same thing as quenching the spirit. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If the way, the word despise means to esteem it less than you should. To not give it much place. To not write it down, to not record it, to not go back over it. Yes. You've just despised it and you quenched the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. well, I didn't know, Brother Phil. Well, now you do. Yeah. Amen. So get it right. Yeah. Isn't that simple? Yeah. Hallelujah. See, what you don't know, you're not responsible for, but now you're responsible. Yeah. <laughs> That if, if there is such a thing as a downside, the only downside to learning truth is that you're responsible for it. And God doesn't take that lightly. For if a man knows to do good but doeth it not to him, it is a sin. So now you're learning. Amen. Either write, write it down or have someone write it down when someone's giving you the word or record it and go back and write it back down. And from time to time, read through it, meditate on it, and pray over it. That's handling it responsibly. Because God wants you to... You have to give birth to prophetic words. And God's word is also a prophetic word. 
You have to give the same way you give birth to the written word, you give birth to the spoken word. And you have to, you have to respond with honor. Not dishonor. I've had people call me and, and, or text me and uh, email me all different ways to apologize to me. One lady, seven and a half years after I prophesied over her, she got, see, sometimes prophecies are not right away. They can be years and years and years. Some of the things the prophets had prophesied three to 4,000 years ago, we're still waiting to see come to pass. And they will. Amen. And so I prophesied something over her. I think she was, we were, at that time I was at the church in Maryville, Indiana, and I prophesied over her some things. Seven and a half years later, she texts, not texts me, but she emails me, Prophet Phil, I'm so sorry I did not take your prophetic word serious. And what I do remember is happening right now. Forgive me for not taking more serious. I've asked God to forgive me too. Is there any way you can remember what you prophesied to me seven and a half years ago? My first thought was, I've probably prophesied over thousands of people since then. She said, what I can remember, I'm happen now. I just wish I would have wrote it down. I wish I would have taken it serious. No. I wish I could say that that is an isolated case, but it's not. Because I have people tell me all the time, something you prophesied 10 years ago, something you prophesied so many years ago, it's beginning to happen right now. See, just because it doesn't happen next week doesn't mean it won't happen. So if you've had some good words, and we've given you some good words from the Lord, you better write them babies down. And take them serious and give birth to it and believe it. The Bible says, believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. What if you don't believe it? You don't prosper. Amen. And, and I want to say this to you. I do my, if you hang around me long enough, I do my best to only prophesy what God is really saying. So I, I don't believe in just good words. I believe in God words that are always good. I know people who just walk around just prophesying scripture, just any kind of scripture, you know, and just, you know, trying to get people to go ooh and ah, ooh and ah. But you know what? None of those words come to pass because, number one, it wasn't what the Spirit of God was actually saying to that person. <laughs> a good word isn't necessarily a God word, but a God word's always good. And, and you know, there was a particular prophet in the Old Testament that the Bible said he did not let any of his words fall to the ground. That was Samuel, by the way. Do you know why God did not let any of Samuel's words fall to the ground and not come to pass? Because Samuel only said what God said. Here's the key to the prophetic, to always have it come to pass. Say only what God says and don't say anything else. And if God's not talking, shut up. Get the anointing of shut up on you. I've had people come to me and said, you know, well, you're a prophet. You should be able to prophesy to everybody no matter what. I said, wrong. I'm moved by the Spirit of God. If God's not giving it to me, I don't have it. Well, you're supposed to have it. You, you know, you're supposed to stir God up. No, no, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to follow what God says. And if he don't say it, I'm not going to say it. Amen. Be silent where God is silent. Be vocal where he is vocal. Amen. Meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting, I love this word, may appear to all. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 through 16. I'm going to go real fast, so you gotta, you're going to have to listen fast. I'll speak fast, and hopefully we both get done at the same time. 1 Corinthians 2, beginning with verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them. Say, God hath revealed them. Unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know. Say, we've received the Spirit of God, that we might know. 
be in the know. Know the things. Know the things that are freely given to us by God, which things also we speak, not of the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's talking about tongues. You may not realize it, but you first speak it in tongues before you ever prophesy it out. You just might have spoken in tongues four hours earlier. Come on, somebody. Every healing, every miracle, everything I've ever seen God do, I actually spoke it in tongues. And if you don't speak it in tongues beforehand, it won't happen later. Somebody will get that eventually. Why it's so important to pray in tongues a lot. Which also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, say natural man, receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned, received, understood, and perceived. That's what the word discerned means. But he that is spiritual, I love this word, judgeth all things. Do you know what the word judge? You need to, you need to do word studies. This word here means discern. Did you know that's what a judge actually does? He discerns what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong. It's called discerning. It doesn't mean to pronounce a judgment. There's no place in the word where God tells us to pronounce a judgment on somebody. That's the wrong spirit. But we are supposed to discern, judge meaning to discern. fruit inspectors so we'll know whether to connect with them or not or put stock in what they say and do amen but he that is spiritual judges or discerns all things yet he himself is not discerned by any man the world cannot discern who you are they can't figure it out for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him or may receive instruction from him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. It's available. Say it's available. Oh, praise God. Well, anybody excited yet? I'm going to jump ahead on a few things. Here's something that really stood out to me in Philippians 2.5. Philippians 2.5. It says this. Let this mind, let this mind, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, the mind of Christ. We have to let it. I said we have to let it, allow it, develop it, listen to it. Think the thoughts God is thinking. Can you do it? Of course. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Whew. We hit earlier the thing about impartation. By the way, Romans 1.11, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift that, that at the end you may be established. We really do impart things to others, good, bad, or ugly. That's why you be careful who you connect to. Don't buddy up with everybody. You can minister to somebody, but don't buddy up with people who don't have the right thing to impart to you. Minister to them and then hightail it out. They're not your buddy. Only buddy up with people that you want to be exactly like. Because you will be. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, if you run with the wise, you become wise. If you run, a run means to hang out with or buddy up with wise people, you become wise. You become like the company you keep. But it goes on to say, but a, com a companion of fools will be destroyed. So you hang out with fools and you get destroyed because fools get destroyed. There it is. I'm going to hit this real quick. Increase your praying in tongues. We hit it just a moment ago a little bit. Increase your praying. In fact, the Bible says you're supposed to be praying in tongues all the time. You know, this pray without ceasing is actually praying in tongues. Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18. Praying always. Well, how much is always? 
all the time, right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Anytime it says in the Spirit, it means in tongues. That's actually the meaning of it. Some people just think it means just fervently pray. But that's not what this is talking about. It's talking about praying in tongues. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication, supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Very important that we pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. When we do, we, we help activate the mind of Christ and the flowing thoughts. I'm going to do this as quick as I can. Romans 8, 26 through 28, I'm going to read right through it, but I'm going to stop on two or three words as I go through and point them out to you. Those who have taken the school of the prophets, you've heard this before, so it's good to hear it again. Romans 8, 26, going through verse 28, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses. For we know not. Did you see that? There's stuff we don't know. I'd say a whole lot of stuff, right? And we don't know what to pray for as we even should pray. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth. That means the Holy Spirit who searcheth the heart, he knows everything. We don't know stuff, but he knows stuff, right? <laughs> he that searcheth the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Then it says this in verse 28. Then, after all of that, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, and those are called according to his purpose. I was teaching this in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, I'm going to teach you while you're teaching. And he said, just tell them what I'm saying. He said, look at the first verse, 26, uh, we know not. not. Then look at the next verse, he knows. Then look at that, verse 28, and now we know. And the Holy Spirit said, why is it you start off not knowing, but you wind up knowing? I said, well, because of praying in tongues. He said, yeah. See, prayer in tongues will take you for, from the unknown to the known. If you do it enough. If you do it enough and you do it long enough. If you do it enough and you do it long enough. Amen? I said, if you do it enough and you do it long enough. If you do it enough and you do it long enough, you get some stuff if you do it long enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Better watch out. I may be rapping any moment now. <laughs> Woo! Then I get happy in the Lord. I start doing that. <laughs> Woo! Whew. Now, learn to exercise. You're going to love this. Learn to exercise yourself in the knowing that God is giving you. In Hebrews 5.14, it says this. Hebrews 5.14. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, spiritually, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised, look at this, to discern both good and evil, to know What's of God and what isn't of God? I'm not talking about the gift of suspicion, which is not a gift at all. Lots of people operate in that, but that is not discerning of spirits. In fact, that's all flesh. Because you're looking at the natural to discern something in the spirit, which means you've already missed it. And then you operate in a critical spirit and start judging people. And I mean judging with a, mm, you're guilty, you're going to hell kind of stuff. See, there's a judgment you and I should never do. It's putting a verdict on somebody that only God himself has the right to do. And when you do that, God said, those who judge, I will judge. And I don't want to be judged. Can we discern? Yeah. Can we be a fruit inspector? By all means. So you know whether or not you want to hook up with that. 
I've been around people, and I, man, I watched the fruit, and I go, that's not good fruit. Now, I didn't say it to anybody. I didn't even say it to them. Just in my heart, this is what, what I was saying to myself. I ain't hooking up with that. I'm going to distance myself. And I did. Didn't say a word. Just distanced myself. Because I looked at the fruit and I go, I ain't good fruit. I wasn't judging them. I was judging the fruit. Come on, somebody. I'm discerning this thing. So I'll know where to hook up and where not to. Ooh, that's good stuff. Amen. How many's enjoying it? Can you write fast? I got three secrets. How many wants these secrets? These are three secrets I use all the time. And it works for me. It works for me. Here's the secrets, okay, to this knowledge, to this knowing, even in words of knowledge or prophecy. Number one, ask the Lord for it. You may think that's simple, but a lot of people don't do it. I had a man ask me several years ago when I was pastoring this church in Oklahoma, and he said to me, he said, Pastor, why is it that God tells you detailed things about people, and you, and you know what's going on, and you can minister to them effectively? I haven't seen anybody else do that. Why is it he does it for you? I said, real simple, I ask him for that information. He said, really? I thought if God wanted to give it, just give it to you. And I said, yeah, how's that working for you? He said, not so good. You have not because you don't ask. Amen. So here's the key. Just ask. Ask for words of knowledge. And that's in Matthew 7, verse 7 through 11. I'll go real quick. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and it shall be given. Look at that. Ask and it shall be given. That's simple. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone. Say everyone that asketh receives. He that seeks finds. To him that knocks it shall be open. Hallelujah. Now you can later read the rest of the verses. But right there is the revelation you need to know right now. I ask the Lord to show me details about people. And then I believe he will. And then I listen, stop, look, and listen, and wait for him to give me something. Isn't, isn't that really complicated? No, it's not complicated. Simple. Amen? It, it, it's meant to be simple. God doesn't want to make it hard. Now, here's the second thing. After you've asked, monitor your spirit, not your natural head, but your heart. Because the Holy Spirit's not speaking to your head. Speaking to your heart. Because he's not in your head, he's in your heart. Come on, somebody. Woo. 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 4.2. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. So you don't get it in the natural. For, they, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. He can't know them because they're spiritually discerned. And the word discerned means to perceive in order to receive, to understand, to get it. If you don't get it, then you don't have it. And you can get it if you ask in faith, believing. It takes a childlike faith. Not childish, childlike. That whatever Papa said is mine, I believe it's mine. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what the devil says it's like. Amen. What if I miss it? You will. But here's the key. Don't ever give up. And walk in humility. See, I learned, I learned that years ago. Walk in humility so if you ever miss it, it's no big deal. Come on like you're some big shot and you miss it, you're going to have egg on your face. I don't have egg on my face. That's the reason I know. I'm standing in front of this lady. Some of you heard this testimony. She's standing up and I'm standing in front of her and I'm, I'm getting some things that I asked the Lord to show me. 
Show me illness. Show me names. Show me things. Well, while I'm, while I'm standing in front of her, I have this flash vision of black lungs. I assumed. That's always a mistake. I said that's always a mistake. Just because God shows you something, don't assume that you know everything else connected to it. You'll always mess it up. And those who have been in the school, you've been taught that. You can receive pure, true revelation, but that doesn't mean you know the interpretation or the application. You have to seek God for each one of those things. And the moment you assume otherwise, you mess up. So I messed up. I said, you have black lungs. You have tuberculosis. Uh, come on, I was more Pentecostal then than I am now. And, and I'm, thank God for people that are sweet. She leaned forward and said, that's not me. That's my husband who has tuberculosis. I felt about this tall. Now, she, nobody else heard what she said to me. And so I prayed for her husband. Now, I've had that happen two or three other times until the, I said, Lord, what is this? I'm, I'm prophesying over somebody, thinking what I'm seeing is correct information, but it's not for them. It's for a family member. I said, what's going on here? And the Lord said this to me. When I looked at Abraham, what did I see? I said, a multitude. He said, exactly. When you're ministering to people, you're seeing them through my eyes. I won't always tell you specifically who it is. It could be one of the kids. It could be a parent. It could be the neighbor they just talked to three days ago. I'm standing over this one man. I'm, I'm talking to, I gave this name and something about cancer. And, and I didn't say it was him. I just said, this is what I'm seeing. Safety in doing that. And he said, you know what, prophet? I said, what? My neighbor came to me about a week ago, this lady, and that's her name. And she said, would you please pray for me? They found cancer. And he said, and that's her name. And I said, well, we're going to pray for her right now, and I want you to go back and tell her what happened tonight because she's going to be healed of cancer. Isn't that beautiful? So walk in humility if you really want to be used by God. If you miss it, no big deal. It's how you handle it. Don't pre present yourself, you know, <laughs> as somebody that's greater than everybody else. Just don't do it. I don't do that. If you watch how I minister, I'm going to ask questions. Lord taught me ask questions. Don't act like you know everything because you don't. And I'm, I'll hide some things from you just because I don't want you to get the big head. He'll keep you humble, my friends. So just humble yourself right away. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I get, you know what? I get so uh, excited when I get it right. I'm like, woo, I hit that one. Oh, Brother Phil, don't you all get, always get everything right? <laughs> right. Exactly. As if I'm God and I'm not. If you're housed in flesh, you're going to make mistakes. That is not wrong for you to make mistakes because you're housed in flesh and you will. Walk in humility and it's no big deal. Act like you're somebody super spiritual and you're going to mess up bad. And God's going to let you fall right on your face. <laughs> Kim Clement was telling me, he said he, he, he was ministering over this one man, he said... Is your name such and such? The man said, no. He said, it ought to be. That ought to be your name. And if you were ever in Kim Clement's meetings, he was extremely accurate. But no matter how accurate you are, you still miss it once in a while. Amen. Because God's not going to let you get full of pride like you're all that in a bag of chips. Come on, somebody. Amen. Do you know who's all that? He is. Jesus is all that. I'm just glad he lets me do what I do for him. He didn't have to do that. He could do it without me. Don't get so lifted up in pride. He could do it without you too. But he lets you in on it. So let's walk in humility. Amen. 
and minister to people. Hallelujah. One man that I knew led someone to the Lord through a wrong word of knowledge. He met, he met him at, you've heard of Sean Bowles, powerful prophet of God, and most of his prophecies are very right on. Well, he, was, he, he walked up to a man, Starbucks, and the guy was in front of him, and they were waiting, you know, to be served, and he just said to the man, uh, is, is there somebody in your family named such and such? And the man went, no. Why do you ask? He said, well, I'm a Christian, and I'm learning how to hear God's voice better. The guy said, Really? If I buy your coffee, will you talk to me about that? I always wanted to talk to somebody about how you hear God. He said, yeah. So he sat down with him, and 45 minutes later, he prayed with the man to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the man became his head elder in the church in Hollywood that he started. Amen. Went on to, to do great things for God by a wrong word. God can use our mess-ups, amen, to do miracles. I like that. Use our mess-ups to do miracles. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. That'll humble you quickly. He's at the grocery store. I'll give you another quick one. He's at the grocery store, and he walks up to a lady, and he asks her some things, and the lady went, no, that doesn't apply to us. And he said he started to walk away, and he said, just, it came to him. Well, don't you have a son that's very sick at home? Yes, I do. How do you know that? See, you can miss it on one and hit it on another one. And before long, he led the whole family to Christ. He could have backed off with the first one and never did anything. Don't let the devil discourage you like that. Walk in humility. Admit you missed it, that you're just trying and you're learning and keep going. You know, we don't get mad at little children learning to walk if they stumble and fall. We don't scream at them. Well, you're a false child because you tried to walk and you couldn't. How dare you? You're a false child. No, we pick them up and encourage them. Keep going. Keep trying. Before long, you'll be walking across the floor and running around the house. Why don't we do that with the body of Christ? If we miss it on some prophetic words, just... Pick them up and, hey, I'm glad you tried. Yeah. Well, keep trying. Don't quit. Before long, you're going to hit a bunch of them. Praise God. If we'll handle things this way, there will be more of God's people used of God in deeper ways. Instead of being so afraid, they, they never venture out. Therefore, nothing ever ventured, nothing ever gained. And we stay with love, love, dove, dove from above. I have a word for you. God loves you. Well, that's a great word. But there's more than that. How about the Lord saying to you, last Thursday you were praying. So I've given people words like this. Last Thursday you were praying and you had a breakthrough at night with God. And this is what you prayed. And I tell them word for word what they prayed. Transform their life. Because I knew God heard it. Come on, somebody. See, God wants, listen, I'll tell you the failures, but I'll tell you the successes. God wants to use you. Amen? And don't count yourself out. I'm going to quit there. Amen? Do you got more? I always have more. Amen? But something my daddy always said, he said, always stop with them, want more. Don't stop with them going, is there going to be more now? Amen. <laughs> How long is he going to speak? Woo. Now, I'm not talking about you folks. I'm talking about other people in other places, other states, other countries, other galaxies and worlds. I just let you off the hook, didn't I? Amen. Well, we're believing God for some things right now to take place. Those who've been with us in meetings... You'll know that sometimes I move in words of knowledge and, and sometimes I, I can walk up to somebody and know things. Other times I just hear it. And I learn something else about the Lord. I don't dictate to God how he's going to give me a word of knowledge. 
because I'm not God. I can't make that decision. It's severally as he wills it. There's times when I've walked up to people and just knew a whole bunch of stuff, and I just, I just let, it, let it flow. Other times I wasn't getting anything except somebody's name or a birthday or some situation like that. And I had to, you know, do a treasure hunt. God has me treasure hunt in the house of God, and you're the treasure I'm hunting. How many's ever heard of a treasure hunt? How many's ever been involved in one? You get clues, do you not? You don't have all the information, you just have a little bit. And you have to figure it out. God does that in the gifts of the Spirit all the time. In fact, He's the one that started that. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of the Lord will give me words of knowledge. It's not, by the way, words of knowledge. It's not all knowledge. It's just a word. I went to one church, and I was giving out these prophecies, and the pastor afterwards, he said, do you realize that, that Brother Phil, some of you are wanting him to give you a whole lot more knowledge? But it, God gives words of knowledge, and you're supposed to fill in the blanks. And you're waiting for me to do it. If it applies to you, get your hand up. Amen. I mean, I went to one church and I heard, I heard this name. Uh, I think it was Kathy and something wrong with the right foot. And so I said, I'm hearing Kathy and something wrong with the right foot. And I said, it, that may be you. It might be a family member. I don't know. I just heard Kathy and the right foot. Eight people. We had 30 people there. Now, eight people lifted their hands that they understood that. They came up. I laid hands on one. I said, how does this apply to you? That's how I do that, by the way. How does this apply to you? My name is Kathy, and my right foot is hurting me bad. I, I twisted it. It's all swollen. Pray with her. The power of God comes on her. She gets healed. I go to the next lady. She says, my middle name is Catherine, and my right foot is bothering me. So I prayed for her, and she was healed. Went to the next one and said, my mother's name is Kathy, and that, her right foot is causing her trouble. All, I went right down the line. To one said, my sister's name. I mean, it went that far with it. Amen. But God was healing all those people, even people that weren't there. Isn't that wonderful? So sometimes there may only be one or two things. I have had times when he would give me six, seven, or eight things. I love those moments. Amen. But I'm not in control of that. I said, I'm not in control of that. And because I'm not, I'm not going to try to produce what isn't there because it won't work. It'll fall, it'll fall flat. I said it'll fall flat. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to release a couple of words, and then I'm going to just see who else God wants me to, to prophesy over, and I may just come right to you. If we do, then just uh, receive that. And sometimes ahead of time, this is what I do, and some of you may wind up doing that. If, if any time you're going to go out and, and uh, witness to people, or let's say that you're asked to uh, teach in a Bible study, it's okay to ahead of time pray and say, Holy Spirit, is there, is there anything you want me to say? Is it, it, does someone have a special need? Is there, do I need to pray for certain things about people's bodies that's, that's causing trouble? Uh, is someone under a heavy burden? Uh, has someone gone through something? Is there anything you want to tell me? It's okay to pray. And when you get these impressions, not here in your head, but in your heart, and they float up, write them down. Write them down. You know how I started years ago with that? Uh, <laughs> I would say, Lord, show me. I was 16 years old. I'd probably turn in, get ready to turn 17. And I had prayed through the night because I was going to be preaching that next day in Oak Park, Chicago. Anybody know where Oak Park, Chicago is? And my, my uncle had a church there, Church of God. My dad and I were asked to go for a week and hold meetings, and I, dad asked me to do half the meetings. And so I was, I was praying and asking the Lord to show me things at, at about 16, 17 years old. And at one time I, I saw an impression, something came to me about a man that when I look out, I could see he would be on my right side in the spirit. It was like a mental uh, 
image, you know, like a picture in my head, I could see him wearing a blue blazer. Well, see, I'm wearing a blue blazer tonight. He was wearing a blue blazer, and the Lord said, I'm going to heal his heart. I wrote that down. Blue blazer, heal his heart, older gentleman. Then I went down to several other things, you know, and I would write whatever I was getting, and it wasn't like a ton of stuff, but it was a few things. So I remember after I preached, I just pulled that out, a sheet of paper, and I looked out, and there was a guy in the blue blazer. I said, sir, I got his attention. I said, uh, the Lord told me last night that there would be a man wearing a blue blazer that would be sitting just about where you're sitting, and that, uh, that the man with the blue blazer has heart trouble, and he needs to be healed in his heart. When I said that, he jumped up, ran to the front, and fell over the altar, and God gave him a new heart. Because the next night he came back and he said, I feel like I'm 30, 40 years younger. I can do stuff I hadn't been able to do. Amen? Something as simple as that. Amen? Or the Lord would, would tell me there's a lady here and she's, you know, she, her right knee is bothering her and, and uh, call her out and minister to her. So I would. Amen? Just simple things. Then later, the Lord would speak a name to me later on. See, the more you do it, the more he'll progress you down the line. Don't try, to, don't try to jump ahead of yourself. You grow into it. How many knows I'm still teaching? Amen. How many still likes it? Come on, this, I'm going to help you because I want you to come into the fullness of what God has for you. Now, how many prays for your family? Anybody pray for loved ones? Okay. Well, I had wrote down a few things that I had received in prayer. And so we're going to see if it fits anybody. And if it doesn't, I'm moving on. But sometimes it does. How many has been in meetings where sometimes it did? Uh-huh. Absolutely. So we're going to see what all God wants to do with this. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. All right, the Lord's releasing some things here. Um, <clears throat> I saw a family member. I believe it could even be a family member or somebody here, uh, either the name James or William, or there may be a family with a James and a William in that family, but I saw something to do with the heart. How many believes God wants to heal some people that, that need some type of a heart healing. A heart healing. What, what, what am I saying? Okay, I wrote down James N. William, but I said heart palpitations and AFib. I wrote AFib on here. Okay. And I had no idea what that person's name was. So, Father, we just release a miracle over James right now. Lord, you know that he's had heart problems, palpitations, and AFib. We declare a miracle for him and that there's no distance in prayer. And we release a healing into his heart right now. We rebuke heart trouble. You said in your word, let not your heart be troubled. So we command heart trouble to go from James. We rebuke it out of him. We speak healing to his heart, being healed of AFib. Even the beat of his heart's going to be made right. It's not going to speed up or slow down or stay at a certain level. No, it's going to be normal in Jesus' name, and the beat will be right. In the name of Jesus, even the blood pressure is going to become perfect. Perfect in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, notice the power of God's knowledge. Any, anybody feel that power begin to come as we begin to hit these things? Anybody notice your faith level was getting higher? Yeah. Because that's, that's what happens. See, words of knowledge will always trigger gifts of faith. And the gift of faith will trigger working of miracles and gifts of healings. Amen. That's why it's so important to do that.
Now, there may be somebody else that's uh, tied in with a William or a Bill or a Billy. Uh, I don't know. And if you, if you have a family member by that name, amen, then we, we'll pray for them as well because God's going to release a miracle even in the family. Hallelujah. And now, listen, somebody could piggyback. How many understands what I'm about to say? Somebody here says, well, I have a family member that is having heart problems. Amen. Then piggyback on this word. Amen. If you want us to release healing to someone else who is having heart problems that in your family, lift your hand and let me pray. Come, We're going to piggyback this right now. I said, we're going to piggyback on this word. Can you do it? Oh, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release healing into this family member's body. We rebuke, wait a minute, you need it. You need it. And God loves you. I, wow. Can I have a couple of ladies come lay hands on her? Because God's about to do something for her. Amen. Not only for a family member, but she's one of the family members that's getting a, a healing tonight. I said she's getting a healing tonight. And some things, dear sister, that hasn't been right is about to be made right. There's some tests that's going to change. Isn't that wonderful? And you've been praying about it. Father, I thank you for touching our dear sister and releasing healing miracles into her body right now and into the bodies of those she's praying for that also need the same miracle. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Wow, man. Holy Ghost on this. There's a flow. Now, someone next to him, did you sense the flow of the Spirit? Those that were around her, did you sense a flow? She was getting a flow right out of each one of you. Amen. Her heart's being healed, and God's making her whole. God's making her whole, and God's changing the diagnosis. God's changing what they said it was and the way it was acting right now in Jesus' name. Listen, my mother was in the hospital with heart trouble, and she said, Father, send me a healing angel. She prayed that at night. The next morning at 6 o'clock, she awakened to see a man standing next to her bed, and she wasn't afraid of him. He wasn't a doctor. He had the kindest face. She said that he, he reminded her of Apostle Pine. Same facial hair and all that. Kind face. She was getting ready to talk to him, and she looked up and saw the clock that was above his head, and it said 6 o'clock, and when she looked back at him, he disappeared. But here was the thing that came into her mind when she first saw him. I need to remember his face because I'm going to see him again. And she has two or three times since then. And each time she would get a healing. We, we ask the Lord right now to send to many of you and your loved ones healing angels. Father, we ask you to send the healing angels to our families to release the healing flow. Right now in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Well, God is good, isn't he? And his mercy endures forever. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, I'm happy in Jesus. I'm happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking for someone who can connect both to a, an Ann and maybe even an Amy. An Ann and an Amy. And perhaps connect to both. Can anybody connect to both? If you can, let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll go to each one. But for some reason, I'm seeing more than just one of those. I don't know why exactly. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, see, I was seeing Anne and an Amy. I'm seeing both of those. Or it could be two of whichever one we just talked about. I see the glory of God. I'm also seeing the month of June in the family. Yes. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Isn't that awesome? The Lord said, I have proven myself to you time and time again. I will always do that because I love you. He says, the plans I have for you are wonderful plans. You remember the Jeremiah 29, verse 11? That's actually your verse. Don't you love that verse? That he has plans for you. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to fulfill it all for you. And you're going to come into a place in God where there's a fulfillment to you. The devil tried to mess your whole life up and take you completely away from the things of God, way out somewhere where you'd be destroyed. Because he wanted you to lose it all, including your mind. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Am I lying to you? Have we ever talked about this? Is it true? Okay. If you heard her, she said it was all true. This is more prophetic, but it's also words of knowledge, but it's also detailed prophetic. Now, here's what the Lord is saying. He said, the work I have begun, I will complete it in you till the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1. And he said, I'm going to prove myself to you again and again and again. And I'm making your life more worth living now than it ever was before. And I'm giving you a hope and a future, Jeremiah 29. And I'm blessing your life. But you made some decisions in the face of the devil screaming at you. In the past, you made some decisions to walk with God, to give it all to God, and to do what God wanted, no matter what. Even if it meant losing certain people in your life. Am I telling you the truth? And you did lose some, but you've gained many. Those that are for you, those that love you. It, people may not know we're going deep right now. Are we not going deep? And it's detailed. Okay. We're going deep right now. And the Lord said, you chose correct. Because now you have a future and a hope. And I'm going to use you in such beautiful ways. And you will, it's, it's going to be so beautiful. You're going to forget all the things of the past. Because the goodness of God it's going to cause you to forget all that. And then you're going to run hard for Jesus and minister the way he has destined you to minister. For you're going to transform lives of people just like you. In Jesus' name. I bless you. Someone just bless her right now. Say, Father, we bless her. Father, we bless her. Yes, yes, my wife reminds me of things. Because <laughs> we're still going to, we'll, we'll still minister to the ands as well, okay? I just didn't want to miss it. Did you say you had an ann in the family? Was that you? Okay, lift up your hands right now. The Lord, you know, we, we talked about the, the work he had begun, he will complete it. Your prayers and your intercession God, can I say something to you, just tell you something I don't know? It hasn't been all that long ago you turned a corner in your own life. Not very long ago. I prophesied she'd come back, and it happened. That beautiful. That's so beautiful. So the work God has begun in her, he will complete it. But he's completing something in you too. I want to say this word, restoration. 
you are being restored completely. But so is the Anne. And he's, but what's beautiful is you're already in the process of it. Like I said, you already turned the corner. So did your daughter. Now you're going to run swiftly for God. And it's going to be so joyful from here on out. But here's the wonderful thing. You remember the things you did before, and you won't make the same mistakes again. Is that true? You won't. So you're never going to face that ever again. The devil lost big time. He should have taken you out when he could, but he wasn't able to because God's bigger than that. Because God also promised all your family, did he not? He promised all your family. And, and he's going to do exactly what he said. And so I, I release blessing over you and over the Ann. Praise God. Did we hit any other Anns that I, I, I skipped over? Really? That is so cool. We got a couple of them here with the June birthdays. I, I don't know this stuff. I think it's words of knowledge, you know, but God, wait, why does God do that? Well, what he's doing is he's bringing confirmation to some things so that we'll know he's serious about it. And it raised our faith level. Now there'll be miracles. Now what's interesting is that the Lord keeps saying about people right now with the Anns and Amy and all of this that God has already begun a work in these people, but he's going to continue to do it. So God's completing something in your mother's life and in her body and in her spirit because the Lord said you're going to have a chance to help her better understand, and you've been doing this, the deeper things of God that was always inside of her, hidden, hidden in her. And you may already know this. I know you're prophetic enough to know this. That really touches home in her when you're able to help her understand because she had that bend because it was generational and it just flowed from her to you and it's still flowing to family. That means everybody, not just your son. That's a good word, isn't it? And the Lord said, and you love this. The same way that you're able to disciple your own son in the prophetic, you will disciple your daughter in the prophetic. She doesn't have to be in the building. I'm not saying that she will never be in the building. Oh, no, I won't say that. But the Lord said you'll be able to disciple both. And the same giftings in you is actually in them as well. And even the school of the prophets, the reason God wanted you to master that was because it's going to benefit you so much to release that to your children. Spiritual children as well as natural children. <laughs> this, somebody needs to lift their hand and praise the Lord. This is such a sweet, sweet service. And it's deeper than most people know. Some of you here, how many knows, some of you here, you know some stuff that I don't know, and it's touching you really deep in your spirit. Let me see your hand. Yeah, about half of you or more, about two-thirds of you. So this, and listen, what's so beautiful about this is that God, you're seeing God move. You're seeing God do it. And the words that I'm speaking out with this is going to all come to pass, everyone. Those that want to be used of God more, lift your hands. I want to pray over you. Father, I pray over every person that's under the sound of my voice. If they want to be used this way, if they want to hear you, if they want to, be, to move in the prophetic, if they want to gain the knowledge of God and even the words of knowledge from God, Father, I pray that, that they'll get so hungry for it that they'll press in. 
and they'll receive it. Even now, receive an impartation. I want you to focus on that right now. Father, I release an impartation into everyone in the room right now who witnessed your prophetic flow and understood how real it was. Cause their desire for that to be so strong that they latch onto it. Listen, I want you to take your faith and grab that and say, this is for me too. God's going to use me. Just say, God's going to use me like this. God's going to use me in the supernatural. God's going to do it in me too. For God is no respecter of persons. He respects faith. And we all can have faith in God. I release impartation over you. Dreams. Visions. Revelations of God. I'm going to say it again. Dreams. Visions. Revelations of God. And God is going to use you in such supernatural ways. Hallelujah. The ones that seem to dream more than almost anything else, you, have, you, do, you know there's prophetic dreams you're receiving all the time. Lift your hand and kind of wave it at me. You have a lot of prophetic dreams. Father, I release greater revelation and greater understanding on how to interpret those dreams according to the Word and the Spirit and, and, and how to, to move with God and operate with the Lord. And, Father, we thank you. Show them what to do with those dreams according to the Word of God, according to the Spirit of God. And I want to share this with some of you. What's great about the pastors you have here, they both understand how to receive interpretations of dreams and visions. They both have that. If you don't understand it and you hit a hard place, contact them. They would love to pray with you, listen to you, and speak over you. Amen. Isn't that great? Man, you have an advantage. <laughs> an at-home advantage right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's so beautiful. That is so, so beautiful. Father, thank you. Some of the things, Jordan, that you have seen in your dreams, if you want to uh, record it, feel free to do that. Some of the things that you have seen in dreams had to do with people and what God wants to do in their life. You've been able to see where the enemy is attacking them, but you're also seeing some of the things that God desires. Is it true? You know what's so beautiful? Is that God can enable me to interpret a dream you never told me about. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Only God can do that. Amen? You know, one of the kings in the Old Testament, you know, he couldn't remember the dream. And he asked, you know, his own dream interpreters <laughs> to interpret. Well, you've got to tell us the dream. No, you're supposed to tell me what the dream is and what it means. And they couldn't do it. You know, so he's ready to kill them all. <laughs> but <clears throat> there's people like Daniel. Come on, the three Hebrew children who sought the Lord. And the Lord told them what the dream was and the interpretation. That just happened right now. And because it was so accurate, everybody, you know, and others that are listening, that that had nothing to do with Phil Rich. It had everything to do with the Lord. And here's the great thing. God's already letting you know how to intercede. Is this true? And so all you have to do here is the Lord wanted you to know that it was him. That's why I'm saying this. And he wants you to know that you are getting the right interpretation. Now, keep interceding, for you will see God perform his wondrous ways. And those people that you love and, and pray for all the time, isn't that glorious? Isn't that amazing? God amazes me. Lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for tonight. Come on, let's praise him. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for the hearts that were changed and challenged. Thank you for the supernatural that's coming to pass. 
for everyone here who believes it. And we release the glory of God in Jesus' name. Now, the couple all the way at the back, I've got all the way to the back. Yeah, I'm pointing right at you guys. Okay, yeah, both of you. I want to give you a word of wisdom with encouragement. And it's not meant to cause fear. There's some things you are facing and will be facing, okay? But it won't last as long as you think, and God is going to bring you out on the other side with great victory. Now, because you already started into some stuff in a battle, this ought to encourage you. I didn't tell you it's over now. It, 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 I saw other things as well, but I saw the end of it, and it's not as long as you think, and it's going to be glorious, glorious. You've already hit some walls. You've already went through some things. Is this true? Okay. But what seems like, it may seem like it's getting worse, but actually God's setting you up for a deliverance from it. I said, God's setting you up for deliverance from it. So it has to go where it's going to go. But you're going to, listen, as sure as I'm giving you a word that I know nothing about, it's going to come to pass. The Lord said, all I need from you is trust. To trust me, believe me, set your faith. Don't let the devil discourage you and tell you it's always going to be this way. It's not. No. There's an end to it, and there's a deliverance on the other side. And on the other side is great bl Great blessing, great victory, and you're going to watch the Lord so bless you and rebuild your lives. It's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. Father, we just, someone stretch out your hands toward them. We agree with them for the other side of this thing and the victory they shall have, and the devil will lose at every turn in Jesus' mighty name. Father, protect them in the middle, in the middle of it and give them uh, great courage and great faith to trust you more than ever before because it won't last very long. And on the other side is oh such blessing from God. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. Whew. Well, you know, earlier I, I, I did think there was a mist in here earlier. And I know, Pastor Jeannie, you smelt the fragrance of the Lord. And I kept seeing, I kept taking my glasses off and looking and putting them back on and taking them back off. Is there a, and there was earlier a mist in here. God's glory has been in the house, which happens a lot here in this place. Amen. How many loves these pastors? Apostles and prophets of the Lord. <laughs> teachers, wonderful teachers. You could not get better teachers than the two that's sitting up here. How many has already figured that out? Amen. And I honor them. And I'm always trying to pick Pastor Dale's mind on some stuff. And he's helped me. He's helped me figure things out that I, you know, I thought I knew, but I wasn't sure, you know, about some doctrine, deep stuff that I've been dealing with because I want to make sure I'm always right on it. So we got to make sure. Well, the best way to do it is not to rely on yourself. Somebody will get that later, I'm sure. Amen. That's why we need each other. Bounce it off somebody else that you trust. And, and, and I, I trust Pastor Dale when it comes to deep theological questions because he spent years studying. Amen. And so I bounce it off of him. And sure enough, I, I would say two or three things that I just really needed to be solidified in my life, he helped me do that. Praise God. And then sometimes I throw really strange questions at him. That My last one was kind of strange, but I, I know he'll work on it eventually <laughs> and help me out. I mean, it, it wasn't life or death or anything. It was just something happened to John figured out. And I saw it for that light before. So anyway... I wasn't trying to stump him because he won't be stumped. He'll pick it up. He's just super busy right now. You know, give people time, right? Amen. <laughs> give them some space. Holy Ghost will tell them. Amen. Praise God. Anybody in love with Jesus? I think I'm done. I'm trying to quit. 
unless someone else reaches out. Sometimes that happens when other people, their faith keeps pulling on me. Praise God. Have I ever prophesied over you before? When was that? A long time ago? Long, long, long time ago. Oh, hallelujah. Well, Father, I thank you for this sister and her love for you. Um, there's some things you're trying. We, we talked about figuring some things out. There's some things you're trying to figure out right now about people and situations in your life and in your family. Also, there's questions about how do I handle this? What do I do now? Even questions about, wow, I want to say it right. What you should be doing in your life now. And the Lord said, I am at the place to unveil it to you more and more. But I saw changes coming in how you pray and seek his face. And I saw some things change in your heart. Even what we were talking about, the humility thing, okay? The enemy comes to get us thinking in a way that's not exactly what God desires. And we've all been there. And it's almost like, you know, I want to try to say this in the right way. The Lord has to unveil things to us in such a way <clears throat> that we don't get in our own way. Did that hit about five people in the house right now? Anybody else understand that? Have you ever been your worst enemy? Let me see somebody. Somebody will be wise enough to lift their hand. Okay. I've been my own worst enemy. But God is actually, can I say this? Now, you've known of the Lord and known the Lord for many years. True? There's no way I would know that. I just know that by the Lord, okay? Because you you ne we've never talked. You haven't told me that. But I want to say this, that what God's about to do in you is going to go beyond anything he's ever done in all the years you have known him. But it's going to change everything you know about him and everything that you have done previously up to this point. Because the Lord is going to want you to press into him in a way greater than you ever pressed into him. And your heart wants it. Is that true? Your heart desires that. And so God said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in you because you want me to. And I'm going to change some things that's going to be hard on you, but you're going to be glad he's doing it. Because to whom much, <clears throat> to whom who wants much, God requires more. And you're not happy with where you've been. It's called a, a holy dissatisfaction, which means God put it in your heart. You want everything to change in your life, and in your family. You want your family to be more focused on the things of God, and you want the presence of God to prevail. You want God. And no matter what, you can't do without him. You've come to that point. It's either all the way or none of the way, but as far as you're concerned, it's all the way. So through this commitment to the Lord Jesus, he's going to take you through a process. Now, we're all going to process. Come on, somebody. But some of us has to pro process differently and more intensely. God's going to put you through an intensive training session. Process. Stuff is going to fall off of you. Things are going to change. How you deal with things. Your time. How much time you spend with God. How much time you spend in the Word. How much time you spend doing things that the Lord would want you to do. You're not going to be giving up everything else, but you're going to give up some stuff. And you're going to lay some things aside so that you have more time with him. I see you getting more committed to the house of God, more committed to the things of God, more committed to the people of God. In the process, everything's going to change. But God said it'll be the change your heart has cried for. Isn't that great? I want to say something to you, and I, I hope I say this in the right way. 
this is going to happen. Okay, it's already happening. If it wouldn't have happened, it would have messed your whole life up and you would have moved from where you're at right now, even physically. Are you aware of that? Yeah, she's already aware of that. But it's not going to happen now because now things are changing. And God's giving you a promise The Christian home you cry out for, God said, shall be yours. Now, I'm just telling you what the Lord said. And you have asked him for that. And you have cried out for that. You stood in your living room crying, saying, God, I must have a Christian home. You did. Yes, she did, see. God even knows the words we say standing in our living room. And the Lord said, I heard you, and I'm taking you up on it, and I'll give you exactly what you asked for. He said, I'm going to deal with everybody in your family, and he's going to give you a promise. If you'll stay, stay strong and keep pressing into God in prayer and in the word and coming to the house of God, being a part of what God's doing, the Lord gives you a promise. You'll have the Christian home. You shall have it, saith the Lord. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Wow. Some of the ladies, would you come around, Pastor Jeannie, if you'd come, and some of the other ladies, and just come love on her a little bit. Just come love on her. Come on, somebody. The rest of you, just stretch out your hand and pray. Father, bless her. Bless her home. Bless her family. Turn everything around. Lord, just bring her into the place she desires the most. And she asked for a prophetic word. She put her hand up. She wanted it. And you let me know I would be ministering to somebody. Okay, okay, well, come up with me. Okay, while, while the ladies are praying back there, we're going we're to pray over here. I almost ministered to her, but go ahead. A week ago, I woke up, and I heard the Lord saying, chanting, all you got to do is say no. No one's no will be more powerful than your no. And there's a sound we make when we really mean it. You know, you can say no, and, and, but God said you got to mean it. When the devil comes and he tries to pull you back, when he tries to tempt you, all you got to say no. And when you say that and you mean it, it will leave. Nobody else can say no for you, Damie. But God's trying to tell you all you got to do is say no. Practice saying no. I do. And when you mean it, there's a sound we make that hell pays attention to. And God said, I'm going to put power in your no. And you're going to say it, and it's going to resound. One time we had the courts of heaven happen here, and the gavel went down because we said enough. My statement is enough. When I've had enough, that's what I say, enough, it is over. You're going to make a sound. You're going to have a word. You're going to have something that tells the devil, "Uh uh-oh. She means it this time. Here's what we say. I need to do this. I need to do that. Means you're not going to do it. Means you acknowledge we need to do it. But you're going to quit saying that. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to say no. I'm going to walk away from yesterday into tomorrow. You cannot take yesterday with you. But you have people waiting on you in the future. And that's what I heard the Lord tell her. All you got to do is say no. Don't overthink it. Don't make it hard. All you got to do is say no. All you got to do is say no. And you know what I did? I got up and started saying no. That ministered to me. I took that word for myself, and I got up, and we got into some powerful prayer, and we're saying no, no, no to sickness, no to poverty, no to our children staying out away from God or our loved ones. No means no. And when you say it right, you will have response. Wow, now that's, that's the Lord speaking to you because she hears the Lord real accurate and has for years. And she's speaking prophetically to you that you are to get in the face of the devil and scream no at him if you have to. And the Lord said, you're fighting demonic spirits and you've been fighting a principality that's been assigned to you. Others are willing to pray with you and stand with you. But you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to sidetrack you and run you away so that you're not connected to the right people. 
then you don't have help. And God said, don't run from those who can help you. Run to them. They'll stand with you. But you have to stand. You have to do what you know to do. Say an emphatic, I mean, shout a no to the devil in his face. You would not do this to me. I am not going this way. I am not going to face that again. You can't kill me. You can't take me out. You can't discourage me. You can't ruin me. I won't let you, and neither will God. Come on, I'm hitting some stuff right now. And if you'll do it with all your heart and keep doing it, you're going to chase that thing down the road, and it's not going to ever have a chance to come back again. And the Lord said, when you do that, make sure you say a big emphatic yes to God. No to the devil and yes to God. That sounds simple, but it's not. It's very complicated because it's something you've got to do all the time. But you will win. You will win. I prophesied to you before. I have seen a wonderful future for you, a great, wonderful, effectual door before you. But you know what Paul said? There, there's a great effectual door for me, but there's many adversaries. See, the devil don't want you to walk through that door, but you're going to do it because you want to. Because in the heart of hearts, Jamie loves God, wants God with everything, and knows she's called, and know that there's something awesome ahead, and you don't want to miss that. You could have missed it. You could have blown it. Aren't you glad the Lord didn't let you do that? More than once, right? Yeah, because he loves you that much. So I'd say you're loved quite a bit by God. Look at all the prophets that prophesy to you in detail and talk to you. I'd say the Lord sends people to you like this because you're worth that. Don't take it lightly. Father, we just speak blessing over her. Just give me your hand. We speak blessing. Wow. Pastor Jeannie, come closer and grab her other hand. Father, right now, we seal this. We seal it by the power of the Spirit right now. We seal these words. And Lord, remind her, let her hear these words over and over. And that she'll hear you saying it through Connie, through Pastor Jeannie. She's going to hear these words over and over, ringing in her heart. And it's going to give her courage that in the darkest hour she will arise and defeat her enemies, not by herself, but by the power of Jesus' name. And we empower her now in Jesus' name. Decisions decide, woman of God. And yes, I'm calling you woman of God because he's calling you that. Decisions decide, so decide. An eternal yes to God and an eternal no to the devil. You going to do that? Uh huh. How about the rest of us? We going to do that? Amen. I'm going to turn this back to the pastors. If you love them, give them a big hand. And some of you need to stand up and give them a standing ovation. Come on, get up. Get up and come on. Let's give them some honor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a night in the house of the Lord. True. Yeah, started out in the glory and just glory kept right on rolling. All right. Well, let's just reach out our hands to the prophet and prophetess here who have poured out their hearts to us. Father, we thank you for the ministry gift you have brought to this house tonight. Now, Lord, we want them to uh, be refilled, renewed, restored, and re just regenerated with the power of your spirit fill them again to overflowing all that they have poured out lord pour back into them and more lord they have sown seed into this place and into our lives now lord bring a harvest of blessing and power into their lives as they go forward and we thank you lord that the road ahead is full of blessing in jesus name amen amen And we, and we thank all of you for uh, giving up 
our Sunday with the prophet so that another church uh, could be able to spend time with the prophet because that was the only time that they had. And so thank you for your sacrificial hearts and, and uh, just being great. <laughs> God bless you all and go in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, there is some snacks? Oh, ho, ho, love snacks. <laughs> <laughs>